Welcome back, literature enthusiasts, to a captivating journey through the realm of post-colonial literature. In our previous lecture, we delved into the multifaceted meanings of post-colonialism and began unraveling its significance. Today, we embark on a voyage to understand how the field of literary studies embraces the term postcolonialism and how it breathes life into the fascinating world of postcolonial literature. As the curtains rise, let's set the stage for our exploration. The term postcolonialism, once tethered to historical contexts, ventured into the literary realm in the late 1980s and 90s. Imagine, until then, it was more an adjective describing conditions postcolonial rule. But the tide was turning, and a new era dawned for literature. Like puzzle pieces coming together, Commonwealth literature and colonial discourse analysis converged, birthing the field of postcolonial studies. Commonwealth, a term uniting nations with British colonial pasts, held promise. But it was not without its quirks, like the absence of America and the exclusion of British literature. In this rich tapestry, threads of identity interwove. Authors defied boundaries, Salman Rushdie's journey from Bombay to England and beyond, to Gore's influence spanning continents. The label Indian or British couldn't encapsulate their complex identities. Enter Commonwealth literature, an umbrella term meant to unify ex-colonies' voices. Yet, a sense of inferiority lurked, separating this literature from British and other non-English works. As time flowed, cracks appeared in this category, echoing its limitations. The 1990s brought winds of change. Enter postcolonial literature, a realm where borders blurred and cross-cultural currents thrived. This field embraced not just English but diverse languages and cultures. Its essence, a critical gaze piercing through colonial legacies. Even as postcolonial literature flourished, it acknowledged its own limitations. Mahasveta Devi's works in Bengali found their place, bridging languages but translations still carried the torch. Gayatri Spivak, a key figure, championed this endeavor. Ah, the heartbeat of post-colonial literature, the spirit of resistance. Unlike Commonwealth's nostalgia, post-colonialism confronted colonialism's wounds head-on. It is a collective effort to undo the damage, to challenge oppressive narratives, and to rewrite history from the perspective of the oppressed. So, dear seekers of literary wisdom, our journey today illuminated the transformation from Commonwealth literature to the bold and critical postcolonial literature. Remember, within these pages lie narratives of courage, cross cultural connections, and, above all, the pursuit of justice. Until next time, keep turning the pages of knowledge and understanding.